All right, we've got the Paris-Roubaix from 2010. I'm going to give a bit of commentary. I'm going to show you my painting of Fabian Cancellara Spartacus. Here we go. So it's 48.6 kilometers to go and Fabian Cancellara is off. He doesn't even get out of his saddle. He's just seated. Zoom, he's off. Tom Boonham should have been paying attention. He was caught napping, don't know how. But Cancellara doesn't even get out of his seat. The seated power he can generate puts huge, a huge gap in the rest of the chasers. He's off. You know, this dude is a one-man band. He's got a little chap behind him, tailing him. This dude's clearly struggling. Spartacus in his prime, 2010, Paris-Roubaix, was just like nothing else. And that's why I wanted to paint this. So we've got this gray road. At the beginning of the painting, I don't wanna make any big moves. So I keep it quite light, I keep it quite watery. So whatever I put in, I know that is not gonna be too visible because something that's darker is gonna be more visible. So I do the light background first. And you can see I even encroach in the lines. I'm, I'm a bit scruffy with it. I want it suggestive. I want to give movement. And I want to give an idea of depth, which I do by darkening up this bit of road at the front. As you can see, there's a slightly darker gray. And that, as I said, it brings the, the image towards you. The darker bits are going to come towards you and the lighter bits fade to the background. So, I've got a little bit of, bit of road, a bit of space going on, a suggestion of a road, nothing too descriptive. I want you to be focusing on Cancellara. And so the background is just suggested. And so these are the kind of trees you get in that part of the world. And now I'm just gesturing in the field to Cancellara's right, if you were him, and for us on his left. Yeah, so the background's nothing too spicy, just a kind of setting, a suggestion of where we are. And I guess a little nod for those who know, I mean, the cobbles would be put in later, but that, that feel there are parts of forest during that race, which are particular sections. I go in with the helmet. I, the helmets are an absolute devil's draw. It's my least favorite thing because they're completely symmetrical and have a very defined shape. Much, well, like the bike, I guess, but even the bike, the wheel turns, but the helmet is just a blob whereas the rest of the body is all about movement. And so there's a, there's a weird kind of relationship with all these organic shapes with the body and then this like one helmet on top of in the middle of everything. But anyway, it's realistic. I have to keep, put it in there because it's real. And it wouldn't make sense without it. So I've got the red for his Swiss jersey. I try and make the, the little brand sponsors as accurate as I can and make them look like they're on uh, a fabric jersey in movement and that can be quite hard but it's quite a fun challenge and gives it quite a real feel in my eyes so the reds popped in I try and do all the reds well all the colors at the same time if I can but often you don't spot like if you're doing a skin color you will miss out a hand so you have to come back later so I, you know I'm not I'm not too forceful about it but it's more economical for your mind for your energy if you do all the reds at once if you do all the greens at once or the blacks at once etc so I try and do light colors to dark colors. So the light colors come first. They're low impact, they're low risk. If you make a cock up with a light color, you're gonna be all right. Whereas if you slap in a black, like I'm doing here, if that goes wrong, you could be in a bit of trouble. But still, you know, it does, I don't let it affect my thinking. Like I try and stay loose, I try and stay energetic, like I'm doing there with the black just kind of plopping in, getting the idea, the feel of, you know, a curve of a glove over a hand. Uh, and I just suggest it. And similarly, I'm very proud of this bit with the, the hoods, the brake hoods. If you see me shade them in here and watch this in a second, I'm gonna bring some, some towel in and I'm gonna dab it, watch this. And so that pulls off, hopla. It pulls off most of the water, it absorbs it but it leaves the pigment, so it leaves the paint. So you don't get this deep black mark like you've got here in the helmet as well. You've got a gray by pulling off the water with that little bit of cutout paper that, I, that I saw, you saw there. Like I say, with the brands, I like to make them true to the time because that will bring back memories for, you know, the people watching and who want this painting or print of it, or even just look at the image. They're gonna remember that sponsor and funny enough, you know, advertising works. It does sit in your head. So it does, oh yeah, that's about 2010, Saxo Bank. You know, you remember that 
he was on that team and that was their sponsor and they, they had Saxo Tinkov, Saxo Tinkov Bank, Bank Saxo Tixo, Tinkov Saxo. They, all, they changed it about all the time, but it's just quite fun to remember the sponsors. I remember Gerald Steiner. That's a really funny one. If anyone knows about that, put it in the comments section. If anyone remembers Gerald Steiner, those teams, or any, any riders from Gerald Steiner. Jesus, I couldn't do that, I don't think. Or Milram. Milram and Gerald Steiner. See if that brings back memories for anyone. Right, so with the leg, I've, I've got that arc of the white, which I've left, which suggests the curvature and the volume of the leg. There is little tricks which I use along the way. Like with the, the seat post there, the saddle post, a little highlight, I left that, which gives a 3D effect in it. And so now I'm giving a lighter gray to go next to his the, the dark black on the shorts. And that gives a slight bit of curvature as well, gives a sense of the volume. And again, I'd use the tissue paper to pull off the dark pigment so that it gives a sense of light hitting the black shorts on his on our left as we lift it. So the skin color is going down. It has to be the same kind of intensity as the red and the black, otherwise it will just fade to the back. Now mine, so you, you see me spend a bit of time darkening it up and playing around with that. Again, I want to give at least three light gradings. So light, mid-range, and then dark. And that gives the sense of depth and light hitting a volume a shape in space. And so similarly with this, his leg, his right leg, I've left that white bit as a highlight, that's sun hitting it. So the sun's coming from our left. You can see that on the arm as well. And in the helmet, you've got that left-hand side is, is highlight. So is the right, I guess, but you know, work with me here. So his, his left leg is in a dark shadow because the light's hitting from the other side. So there's no light hitting that leg, so it's darker. I've also darkened up, as you can see here, I'm going with a deep kind of brownie red underneath his chin because his torso is bent over so the sun won't be hitting that so it's going to be causing a shadow on on the chest it's going to be darker it's going to be in shadow anyway so that is the painting section for now over with later in the video i'm going to go into the very final touches the details but now we've just got a quick clip of me trying to lose a bit of weight and get back on the bike okay here we go again I think I've reached peak fatness. I have to get rid of this shit. it's too much. My knees are hurting, my hips are hurting, my breathing ain't good. Let's get fit, come on, come on. Not looking good, not feeling good, but I gotta get it done. I'm just gonna chill, you know? I'm just gonna keep getting out on the bike and just trying away and see what happens. I call this part of the climb the Swain 2. It's Swain's Lane in Highgate in London. Give me some gas. That's me, come on. <sighs> Got these up here. Beautiful. By the way, it's seriously steep this time. Don't really be missing the Highgate Hill. I think the hill is about seven minutes, depending on where you start from. I actually use like nine minutes. I start from right at the bottom when there's a little baby foothill. So at the top, this is called Pond Square, and I like to warm down. After I've done one lap of Swain 2, I like to do a warm down, and then I go down the hill, nice and relaxed. So I'm not really recovering so much on the down hill. I'm not trying to flush my legs of lactic acid. I do that while I'm safe at the top in this quiet, Square, Pond Square. Then I zip down and I come straight back up onto Swain 2. See, I like having a look around. There's, there are people drinking like homemade booze up there, pretty sure. With lockdown, they've, I don't know, they've obviously closed the pubs, but the people of Highgate Village have to keep boozing. So you see them with these kind of urns of cider or something like that. And I like the vibe in that square. It's always nice. It's always people like looking at you saying hello.
bollocks. So at this point of the painting, I'm pretty much finished and I can mess it up with any foul brush stroke. So I'm taking great care with what I do when I'm doing this. The final 20% of the painting probably takes about 80% of my energy and 80% of the time even as well. Because as I say, you can cock it up so easily because you're going with blacks and like dark colors or a pen even. And if you make the wrong choice, it's gonna fluff it. So you both wanna be very confident but also aware that you could muck it up very easily. So it requires a lot of thinking and stepping back and trying to get a fresh view of the piece. Because if there's something you've missed, like something doesn't look quite right, that's when you're going to have to make it better. You know, that's when you have to correct it. So here I am, moving away from the painting, looking at squinting, getting a different angle, going out the room, stepping back, getting a different angle, doing any trick I can to see what it actually looks like. Because you get sucked into a painting and you actually can't see what it looks like. That's a really common thing, although it sounds crazy. And here I am just giving a bit more of, bit more detail, bit more oomph to the painting by adding in these splashes. I don't want to go overboard. I see a lot of people who've done cycling paintings go absolutely overboard and it just hams it up. And it, it's like, yeah, you know, it's like a ham actor. It's just, you know, it's too much. We don't want to be just looking at the splashes to give a sense of motion. You have to do more than that. You can't rely on splashes for everything. They're just a little extra something, something. They're not everything, you know? So that's why I don't like to make them too prominent. I don't like to overuse them either. I use them only when they're needed. These are the kind of tricks you, you pull out, not all the time. So I cover Cancellara and I do a bit more splashes. And I, I don't want it, like I say, I don't want it to make it too obvious. So I sort of pull it back and I rub it away and, you know, I don't want to take the mickey. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you haven't had a chance already, check out the website. This painting is for sale. Instagram at the moment is Paintings of Latour. If you haven't already checked it out, please do. I spend a lot of time on that and I think it's I think there's some good work on there. Yeah, final touches. Here we go. Cancellara, 2010, Paris-Roubaix, what a ride, what a dude, shame he had to retire, all good things come to an end, like this video, see you later, thanks a lot for watching, bye bye. In the round, this is from a much greater order, adieu, say, on the way, 50 kilometers from the ankomst.